Earth's energy budget accounts for the balance between the energy Earth receives from the Sun, and the energy the Earth radiates back into outer space after having been distributed throughout the five components of Earth's climate system and having thus powered the so-called Earth's heat engine. This system is made up of Earth's water, ice, atmosphere, rocky crust, and all living things. Quantifying changes in these amounts is required to accurately model the Earth's climate. Received radiation is unevenly distributed over the planet, because the Sun heats equatorial regions more than polar regions. The atmosphere and ocean work non stop to even out solar heating imbalances through evaporation of surface water, convection, rainfall, winds, and ocean circulation. Earth is very close to being in radiative equilibrium, the situation where the incoming solar energy is balanced by an equal flow of heat to space. Under that condition, global temperatures will be relatively stable. Globally, over the course of the year, the Earth system, land surfaces, oceans, and atmosphere — absorbs and then radiates back to space an average of about 240 watts of solar power per square meter. Anything that increases or decreases the amount of incoming or outgoing energy will change global temperatures in response. However, Earth's energy balance and heat fluxes depend on many factors, such as atmospheric composition, mainly aerosols and greenhouse gases, the albedo reflectivity of surface properties, cloud cover and vegetation and land use patterns. Changes in surface temperature due to Earth's energy budget do not occur instantaneously, due to the inertia of the oceans and the cryosphere. The net heat flux is buffered primarily by becoming part of the ocean's heat content, until a new equilibrium state is established between radiative forcings and the climate response. <laughs> energy budget In spite of the enormous transfers of energy into and from the Earth, it maintains a relatively constant temperature because, as a whole, there is little net gain or loss. Earth emits via atmospheric and terrestrial radiation shifted to longer electromagnetic wavelengths to space about the same amount of energy as it receives via insulation all forms of electromagnetic radiation. To quantify Earth's heat budget or heat balance, let the insulation received at the top of the atmosphere be 100 units, 100 units equals about 1,360 watts per square meter facing the Sun, as shown in the accompanying illustration. Called the albedo of Earth, around 35 units are reflected back to space, 27 from the top of clouds, 2 from snow and ice-covered areas, and 6 by other parts of the atmosphere. The 65 remaining units are absorbed, 14 within the atmosphere and 51 by the Earth's surface. These 51 units are radiated to space in the form of terrestrial radiation, 17 directly radiated to space and 34 absorbed by the atmosphere 19 through latent heat of condensation, 9 via convection and turbulence, and 6 directly absorbed. The 48 units absorbed by the atmosphere 34 units from terrestrial radiation and 14 from insulation are finally radiated back to space. These 65 units 17 from the ground and 48 from the atmosphere balance the 65 units absorbed from the Sun in order to maintain zero net gain of energy by the Earth. <laughs> Incoming radiant energy shortwave equals the total amount of energy received per second at the top of Earth's atmosphere TOA is measured in watts and is given by the solar constant times the cross-sectional area of the Earth. Because the surface area of a sphere is four times the cross-sectional surface area of a sphere i.e. the area of a circle, the average TOA flux is one quarter of the solar constant and so is approximately 340 W per square meter. Since the absorption varies with location as well as with diurnal, seasonal and annual variations, the numbers quoted are long-term averages, typically averaged from multiple satellite measurements, are the approximately 340 W per square meter of solar radiation received by the Earth, an average of approximately 77 W per square meter is reflected back to space by clouds and the atmosphere and approximately 23 W per square meter is reflected by the surface albedo, leaving approximately 240 W per square meter of solar energy input to the Earth's energy budget. 
This gives the Earth a mean net albedo of 0.29. Earth's internal heat and other small effects The geothermal heat flux from the Earth's interior is estimated to be 47 terawatts and split approximately equally between radiogenic heat and heat left over from the Earth's formation. This comes to 0.087 watt square meter, which represents only 0.027% of Earth's total energy budget at the surface, which is dominated by 173,000 terawatts of incoming solar radiation. Human production of energy is even lower at an estimated 18 terawatts. Photosynthesis has a larger effect. Photosynthetic efficiency turns up to 2% of the sunlight striking plants into biomass. 100 to 140 terawatts or around 0.08% of the initial energy gets captured by photosynthesis giving energy to plants other minor sources of energy are usually ignored in these calculations including accretion of interplanetary dust and solar wind light from stars other than the sun and the thermal radiation from space Earlier, Joseph Fourier had claimed that deep space radiation was significant in a paper often cited as the first on the greenhouse effect. Topic: <laughs> Longwave radiation. Longwave radiation is usually defined as outgoing infrared energy leaving the planet. However, the atmosphere absorbs parts initially, or cloud cover can reflect radiation. Generally, heat energy is transported between the planet's surface layers land and ocean to the atmosphere, transported via evapotranspiration and latent heat fluxes or conduction, convection processes. Ultimately, energy is radiated in the form of longwave infrared radiation back into space. Recent satellite observations indicate additional precipitation, which is sustained by increased energy leaving the surface through evaporation the latent heat flux, offsetting increases in longwave flux to the surface. <laughs> Earth's energy imbalance If the incoming energy flux is not equal to the outgoing energy flux, net heat is added to or lost by the planet if the incoming flux is larger or smaller than the outgoing respectively. <laughs> Indirect measurement An imbalance must show in something on Earth warming or cooling depending on the direction of the imbalance, and the ocean being the largest thermal reservoir on Earth, is a prime candidate for measurements. Earth's energy imbalance measurements provided by Argo floats have detected an accumulation of ocean heat content OHC. The estimated imbalance was measured during a deep solar minimum of 2005 to 2010 to be 0.58 plus or minus 0.15 W per square meter. This level of detail cannot be inferred directly from measurements of surface energy fluxes, which have combined uncertainties of the order of plus or minus 17 W per square meter. Topic: <laughs> Direct measurement. Several satellites indirectly measure the energy absorbed and radiated by Earth and by inference the energy imbalance. The NASA Earth Radiation Budget Experiment project involves three such satellites, the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite ERBS, launched October 1984, NOAA-9, launched December 1984, and NOAA-10, launched September 1986, today NASA's satellite instruments, provided by Ceres, part of the NASA's Earth Observing System are designed to measure both solar-reflected and Earth-emitted radiation. Topic: Natural greenhouse effect. The major atmospheric gases, oxygen and nitrogen, are transparent to incoming sunlight, but are also transparent to outgoing thermal infrared radiation. However, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and other trace gases are opaque to many wavelengths of thermal radiation. 
The Earth's surface radiates the net equivalent of 17% of the incoming solar energy in the form of thermal infrared. However, the amount that directly escapes to space is only about 12% of incoming solar energy. The remaining fraction, 5 to 6%, is absorbed by the atmosphere by greenhouse gas molecules. When greenhouse gas molecules absorb thermal infrared energy, their temperature rises. Those gases then radiate an increased amount of thermal infrared energy in all directions. Heat radiated upward continues to encounter greenhouse gas molecules, those molecules also absorb the heat, and their temperature rises and the amount of heat they radiate increases. The atmosphere thins with altitude, and at roughly 5 to 6 km, the concentration of greenhouse gases in the overlying atmosphere is so thin that heat can escape to space, because greenhouse gas molecules radiate infrared energy in all directions, some of it spreads downward and ultimately returns to the Earth's surface, where it is absorbed. The Earth's surface temperature is thus higher than it would be if it were heated only by direct solar heating. This supplemental heating is the natural greenhouse effect. It is as if the Earth is covered by a blanket that allows high-frequency radiation sunlight to enter, but slows the rate at which the low-frequency infrared radiant energy emitted by the Earth leaves. <laughs> Climate sensitivity A change in the incident radiated portion of the energy budget is referred to as a radiative forcing. Climate sensitivity is the steady state change in the equilibrium temperature as a result of changes in the energy budget. Topic: <laughs> Climate forcings and global warming. Climate forcings are changes that cause temperatures to rise or fall, disrupting the energy balance. Natural climate forcings include changes in the Sun's brightness, Milinkovitch cycles small variations in the shape of Earth's orbit and its axis of rotation that occur over thousands of years and volcanic eruptions that inject light reflecting particles as high as the stratosphere. Man-made forcings include particle pollution aerosols that absorb and reflect incoming sunlight, deforestation, which changes how the surface reflects and absorbs sunlight, and the rising concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, which decreases the rate at which heat is radiated to space. A forcing can trigger feedbacks that intensify positive feedback or weaken negative feedback the original forcing. For example, loss of ice at the poles, which makes them less reflective, causes greater absorption of energy and so increases the rate at which the ice melts, is an example of a positive feedback. The observed planetary energy imbalance during the recent solar minimum shows that solar forcing of climate, although natural and significant, is overwhelmed by anthropogenic climate forcing. In 2012, NASA scientists reported that to stop global warming, atmospheric CO2 content would have to be reduced to 350 ppm or less, assuming all other climate forcings were fixed. The impact of anthropogenic aerosols has not been quantified, but individual aerosol types are thought to have substantial heating and cooling effects. See also Planetary equilibrium temperature Clouds and the Earth's radiant energy system Earth's internal heat budget. Equals equals notes.